The following is a fan-based discussion. All properties discussed are property of Toei Inc., Bandai, Hasbro, and Subarai Productions. Bum bada bum bum bun. Bum bada bum bum bun. Da 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 Go Ranger. Hello everybody. Hello, hello. Welcome to episode 140. Mm. Where we talk about Hibitsu Sentai Go Ranger, the first. The first Sentai. The we first are... one has of 1995. We're here at last. <laughs> yes, I'm very excited to sort of be done with this one, no, honestly. So <laughs> oh, did I give my opinion away too early? It's sort of weird. Whoops a doodle. Coming from, not really re- revised, but coming from the original writer to this, mm-hmm. where I had issues with this. There sort were of. things that I liked, so this will end up being good, bad, or bad, because it is exceedingly episodic. <laughs> um, to its own detriment in some cases. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I. Let's, we talked about the theme song before. Yes, I love that theme song, it's so iconic. The, the the opening's okay. The first ending I like. Oh, you don't like the second one? Um, it's okay. Just I mean, it just kind of went in one ear at the other. Yeah, I do like the endings. Though. Like a lot of the show, to be honest. I like both of them. <laughs> uh, I want to end on a good note. Okay, so we want to start with the bad and the terrible. We'll okay, lump them together as you usually do. <laughs> Or do we? Or do, is there anything that really sticks out as terrible that you want to get out of the way first? In all honesty, and it's sort of weird to talk about this character, uh, because unfortunately the actor did commit suicide two years after the show was over. Yeah. Key Ranger, the first one. Mm-hmm. Not a fan. <laughs> like in any real capacity. El- elaborate. He was there mostly just as comic fodder and to eat curry, especially at the beginning of the show. And that's sort of his character trait throughout the entire. He, he was the show. comedic one. He's yeah. he's big. He's loud. He's uh, solving the riddles. Very very forthright and very very big, larger than life character. And he loves to eat. The first one of the first things we see him do when he comes into the you know juice bar, for lack of a better phrase, into the cafe. Yeah, I think the first one's like a curry shop. The second one's a juice bar. Yeah, but but, but they go in and he orders four curries. And he's and he just starts wolfing him down, and I mean, am I hungriest? Yeah, I could probably do that, but mm, I guess that's how we're gonna define him. Yeah. And that's the thing about a lot of these characters is they have one trait, and that's pretty much all you get. I'll disagree on one of those characters. And I think we'll get to that one. Yeah. So, but it's and just, I think I can guess which one it is. Yeah, Key Ranger gets captured a lot. Both of them do. That's like their thing. Let's get him captured, and it's just like. A, a good portion of the episodes, at least one to two every ten episodes, mm-hmm. he gets captured at some point. Mm-hmm. It's usually just him. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't. There isn't a lot there, and that upsets me. Mm-hmm. He he got annoying. Oh, since we are talking about Key Ranger, I want to talk about the second one's death. Go ahead. My, I hated this so much. <laughs> like, I didn't mind the death scene. It's just everything that happened after. Mm. Because Daigo goes... Um, not Daigo. What was the first character's name? Daito? Daito. Daita. Daita. Daita Oiwa and Daigoro uh, is the second one. Mm. But uh, Daita goes and like he has to train some other branch of eagle. We'll talk about them too. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're just like, you know, this guy will come in and cover for him. Apparently, the actor had to go and like start a play for a couple of weeks. Mm. And that's why he wasn't there. Uh, speaking of not, not there, we'll talk about Blue in a bit. <laughs> because he was not there for a good portion of this. Um, and so they had this guy come in and then I guess the play finished. So they killed the second one off. Mm. And he has like a pretty good focus episode, I'll actually say up until that point. It's just the aftermath of it. It's all condensed into that episode. It's not something that goes forward. Mm-hmm. And you would think that we had a member of our team die. Dramatic and long-lasting consequences are not at the forefront of this show's priorities. No. And like I understand... Uh, that it doesn't always have to be like that. We got a lot of that in uh, Comrade, but that's sort of the really integral to the point of the show proper. But 
I feel like if you're going to do something that big, it needs to have lasting consequences. People need to think about that character. <laughs> and they really seem to forget about him after Daicha shows back up after Daigoro's death, halfway through that episode, mind you. I feel like with Common Rider, there was at least some attempt at dramatic depth. Yeah. With Go Ranger, it might be one of the most surface level black and white good versus evil shows we've ever reviewed for this channel, and that is saying something. Yeah. Because it it feels like someone took the notion of children playing with toys. You know, I have my good guy action figures and my bad guy action figures, and they're gonna fight each other. And that's every episode is here's a bad guy. We've got our good guys. They're going to fight. And that's any, any time you try, when I say you, I mean, I should say me. Anytime I tried to engage with the show on any kind of dramatic level or any kind of level other than historical like looking at looking at it through the lens of history and seeing where Toku Sentai in particular, like where it came from, where it is now. And not just that, it's just seeing like the culture at the time. Yeah, seeing seeing the culture at the time, whether that be the costumes, whether that be the filming style. Or seeing Pan Am flying. <laughs> <laughs> People smoking inside buildings. People smoking in buildings, doing as much in camera stunts as they possibly could because they were limited with technology and special effects. And seeing that was definitely it was it was interesting and that was the thing that held my attention the most but anytime i tried to like pick anyone apart as a character or see like what made a what makes a character tick what makes this monster tick there's nothing it, it, it is it is Lord. it is a pie that is all crust yeah, the monsters, and I like pie crust, but you know, you need something bake, else. bake it separately, sprinkle a little cinnamon sugar on it, brush it with some melted butter, you got something good. But and maybe think, give me a glass of milk to go with it. I think that sort of is a definite problem here. Uh, I want to talk about Meteor Ranger a little bit because I don't remember him. I think he was the most forgettable out of the main cast. Because mm-hmm. who? Do you remember? Oh God, do you remember that? I don't remember what anime this was, but it was something you watched in college that I was watching with you, where like a mascot character is explaining like the the ranger tropes. Sarah Flamingo. It wasn't Samurai Flamenco. This was like a, it was like a random segment on another show, yeah. and he was talking. It was like, well, red is red is the leader, and blue is the cool one, and yellow is the funny one, and pink is the girl, and green is just sort of there. And it's like that's pretty, accurate. That's pretty accurate for this show. For this show, for this show good. specifically, it's like you pulled it directly from this. Which is sad because we've seen him in Battle Fever, and he was good in that. The actor, at least. Mm. And it's just like, I really feel like they didn't give him anything. He was the first Battle Cossack, the one who got shot. The one who they made fun of in that episode of Zinkaiser with all the bad luck. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I mean, we got another, I mean, another veteran, Hiroshi Miyauchi, is is our ranger. But. I don't want to put him in the Terabat category. It's sort of. I wouldn't put him in Terabat either, but like. In terms of, like, I, I never really got anything really noteworthy out of his performance. No, and it doesn't help that apparently he was filming like some movie at the time, some samurai movie at the time, mm. and then he also had to go be in a play, so he wasn't there. Another one in a play, oh well. For all of it? I mean, good on him for getting the work, but still. The dude was busy. This is before... This was, is this is after V3. This is after V3. Yeah. He was in the next season after this, mm-hmm. and then he went on to be in Zubat. Oh, goodness. So yeah. he was just busy. In so, he, so he was working. He was really busy. Good for him. <laughs> Dude was out there doing the most, and I sort of live for it. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, I love how the guitar thing just sort of was a through line. Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember him playing the, uh, the guitar, the guitar in, times in V3. And, and, and Zubat, of and, course. That was like his trademark thing. And then in this, it was almost all the time, too. But he was the pilot, and he didn't really do much. He dresses like I'll, a cowboy. Yeah. Every, everyone's got their civilian outfit that they wear. I don't understand why they had him just be the pilot, but I guess just like, all right, I, know, I understand that you can't be here all the time, but at the same time, you sort of don't have that much of a character. Yeah, also... It was just cool. Also, yeah, thing. first Sentai, no mech. We have the we have the plane, like in uh, Gotcha Man. We'll have this. Gotcha Man had the uh, God Phoenix. Uh, this and uh, Jacka. That mm, don't have no that mech. That don't have mech, yeah. We didn't get one until Battle Fever. Yep. So it was just strange. 
in some cases. I'm not gonna say it's strange, but, but it's definitely, but it's definitely like the 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 way like seeing a vehicle, a team vehicle, the two incorporated the into a way that wasn't uh, that wasn't like a giant robot that way you have to fight a kaiju with. Because they had uh, the very green and the very vroon. We got our motorcycles here. And uh, all of our motorcycles and stuff, uh, both of which they destroyed by uh, basically throwing them at a base of the Black Cross Army. Um, another thing well, that I really did not like, hmm. and this is more of a thing that happens in the second half, at least something that I noticed more, hmm. tonal whiplash is a problem. My God. I didn't really get that. Not as much as I did with, say, Common Rider, when because those like first th- those first thirteen episodes where there is like one confirmed kill per episode, and it's very dark, and then it gets really silly, and then it's like a stretch of weirdness for a while, and then around episode like fifty something, it finally turns into the show yeah. that I thought it was going to be. Weirdly enough, Go Ranger is kind of the same thing. It's weird because I noticed it so much more second half. Yeah. After they got like the new weapons and stuff. Yeah. It's that, like the monsters became so much less threatening second half of the they, show. They become less weird. threatening. They become sillier because like the baseball monster. Ten, ten. What's the What's the one that that they always seem to go back to? The baseball monster. That thing doesn't show up until like the second half. The second half of the show yeah. again. It's like oh, but wait, really? For some yeah. reason, it's iconic, and I'm not upset. And I that. think it's because it's because. Is that the one where they turned it into like the noodle soup and the monster drank it and they blew up? Or was that another one? That sounds like the show. <laughs> it, it was the show. That sounds like the show. That's that's a lot of the show. I, just because like their first finisher, it's like a ball. It's a ball that they kick around to each other. It bonks the monster on the head, and then they explode. And then the monster. Well, it's like sometimes the monster will explode right away, and sometimes they'll like stumble down a hill in a completely different location. And the sun will be reflecting on them in the autumn twilight. And they'll, you know, drop to their knees and swear vengeance to the heavens and then explode. I think one of my favorite, because they had like... <laughs> or they, or more, 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 more accurately, they will collapse to the ground. They will jump cut to another shot where they're not in it. And then there will be an explosion. I think one of my favorite ones is when they kicked Ooh. the ball, but the monster did something uh, previously. So they had to delay it. Like, they had to delay the explosion of the ball, mm-hmm. and then it exploded. It mm-hmm. was... I, I love when they get sort of stupidly creative like that. It's so funny. <laughs> or creatively stupid. Um, and then the second half, when they turn into a rugby team. Mm-hmm. And then it got specific to that monster itself. Yep. I do love the finishers for that. Because it's just like, why? Did you like the finisher where they all lie down in a pinwheel pattern and just sort of roll around in the dirt? <laughs> to be fair, they, they did a couple things like that in Rider 2. So. They they did what they had to because, again, almost everything is done in camera. They do as much in-camera work as they can. They used all the editing tricks that they could for the time. The final episode, since I watched it this morning, I finished the show as of today. Mm. Makes no sense. Go on. There's no... This is something that is sort of an issue with shows like this, mm. where there's no buildup. Mm. <laughs> they just go, and the Black Cross here is like, oh, I can do this, and then he doesn't. And then he dies. <laughs> and then a, he dies. As a big uh, floating ship. It, it just, okay. There was no buildup. We got to end it somehow. The Black Cross here. Coming out and doing anything. Mm. He was a lot more threatening before they gave him a face. Mm. When he was just a clan member. Mm. That's what he was. <laughs> he was a lot more threatening as that. And it just. You could say the same thing about Common Rider. Yeah. Where you had like that guy, and then like you see him once in the final episode, and then it's like, hey, a skull. He's, first he's a clan member, then he's a skull, then he's a Gorgon, and then he explodes. But he didn't die. They had to reveal his... He had crystallized. They had to reveal his face like three times in one episode. Yeah. It was like as soon as they revealed his face and they made him just have so many really out there facial expressions. Not to mention the ADR for this show. Not good. Because uh, they do film yeah. like... They do all of the talking and stuff on location. But they have to go out you know, and redo it. I mean it. they do that nowadays. But the lip flaps don't match. <laughs> They finished sentences 15 seconds before the rest of the line. Mm. I was here like, well, oh. now what? Oh. 
Is there anything that sticks out to you as bad? Just plain old bad. Red doesn't get a lot of character development either. I would say nobody does. <laughs> no, I feel like weirdly <laughs> enough, they give the most like, oh, things happen beforehand to Peggy. Peggy seems to be I the, that's what you were the breakout about. star for this, and I really want to talk about her when we get to the good, because mm-hmm. I really do think she's probably the best thing about this show. Mm-hmm. Um, Red has one of my favorite episodes where they're doing like the Black Cross Army is doing some underground construction, mm-hmm. and he goes undercover as a worker. Mm-hmm. I I'm going to say that for the good, though, okay. because that is one of my things. But he doesn't really get a lot at all. He's the leader. He's mm-hmm. the serious one. That's sort of his MO. And it's not awful. You can see where there's just like, all right, this is where the archetype really comes from. Mm-hmm. But still, eh, meh. Maximum meh. <laughs> Only meh. Uh, the commander... Eh. Sort of there. Yeah, a lot of a lot of characters are just sort of there. Uh, That's the thing. A lot of the, it's just like there isn't really much of an impression left because anytime I try to engage with it, it's just like yeah, I'm getting nothing. I, I, I got nothing. <laughs> there were things that I liked about this show, though. That's the thing that sort of pissed me. Shall we off. move on to the good? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to save the big one for last. Um, when they do like legitimate spy stuff. Because mm. they are the secret squadron. I adore it. Mm. I really do. Seeing them in like all these different various locations and stuff and going around like actually doing uh, infiltrating. They have Eagle members on the inside of, of their organization. The Black Cross Army has uh, insiders on their organization, mm-hmm. on the Eagle as Eagle. well. It's just like I love seeing stuff like that. It's really interesting to see the um, intricacies of the networks between mm-hmm. the two organizations and how they work against each other. Wasn't a big fan of just constantly blowing up stuff. <laughs> at the end of this, it seems like explosions. There are, there That's are, our answer to everything. There are no buildings left in anywhere. <laughs> Certainly not in the mountainous areas of Japan. No. No. But yeah, I I just really really love when they did like actual. We have this person on the inside, and they get some espionage, and then they're trying to escape, but they get killed, but they still get the information to us. I'm just like, oh, I love that. Mm. That it seems like just a legitimate spy show. It's just when they got into the suits because the suits are atrocious. We talked about them multiple times before. Capes are bad. Uh, <laughs> it's just. I would. I would actually. I think I would put the suits in good, considering the time they came out. I think. I think there is a charm to it. Oh yeah, for the for time sure. they came out, but it's just like mm. they. They are not form fitting at all. They're no, not. They're they're, they're not aesthetically pleasing. They are cloth. They are not spandex. Yes, they are cloth. And like anytime you see them rolling around in the dirt or getting dirty in some way, you're like, oh, some poor sod had to wash that. Uh, well, they made a lot of. But this. like again, looking at it as a historical piece, and just like seeing how it started and where we come, I think there is a certain charm to it. I just I just really don't like these suits, and I despise these helmets because they're just so big. At least they don't have lips. That's a plus. <laughs> Had to wait two years for that, and we were still pissed about it. Um, <laughs> I I really do like just how the network, the network that they had with Eagle, just like mm. they have people all across the world. I like the first episode, the way we are introduced to the Rangers. Oh, where all their bases get destroyed. Where all their bases get destroyed, but also how it's like every one of them was like a lone survivor of a Black Cross uh, Army attack, and that and that's how they were chosen. And I really like the scene. My favorite scene in the whole show is, it's also in the first episode where they meet at the at the restaurant for the first time, and, you know, Yellow's there, he's eating his curry, uh, Pink's chilling in the background, and I think it's like four of them are there. So what he, are the, uh, Red shows up last. Yeah. No, actually, Red shows up fourth. You don't see Shinmei blue until yeah. they go down to the actual base. Yeah. He's playing his guitar. Yeah, but I, I love that scene, because it's like, they're, they're meeting there, and then one of them puts their, because uh, they have like their insignia. They were they were just given a piece. One of them puts it on the counter on the bar. Another one puts it on the bar, and they clink them together. And then another one, and then another one. And they're like, "All right, well, we're missing one. I think we got it. Let's." And then like, there's that, that moment of recognition where they look at each other and like, "Okay, this is our team. <laughs> All right, let's let's get, let's get started." And That's they what head we're going and, for. They, and they head down into the into the secret headquarters. So that was cool. Yeah. I like that. I like that scene. There were, yeah. I really do like that first episode. It's a good first episode. I gotta talk about the big one. 
This is Peggy's show. <laughs> Nobody else's show but hers. Only Peggy. Mm. Peggy's the standout. <laughs> like, legit. She gets so much focus put on her in this show. Which is surprising. Yeah. But it's like, she's the one that you see, in all honesty, probably the most out of the entire cast. Mm. You see Peggy so often. She gets a lot of focus episodes. Every single focus episode she has, she is in what? Disguise. And I love her for that. <laughs> Every- she said disguise she said explosion <laughs> she said kick and I was like I love this woman <laughs> she was in all honesty at least for me the best part of this show every single especially because the lady could act and fight she was on um, the suit actress for Miss America mm. uh, in Battle Fever so I'm just like I loved watching her mm-hmm. she was so interesting to watch and just Seeing her really, really stand out in the show. I think from what I read the other day, the only two characters who actually got like actual figures made of them were Red and Pink. Really? Yeah, the other three didn't get one until later. Because I assume now you could probably find some. (laughs) Yeah, but she got one almost immediately, and I think she just really took off. Mm. The lady was just good. It was so... What's the word I'm looking for? I was so invested in anything she did. I really was. And I thought going into this that it would be Hiroshi Miyuchi, but then he showed up never. So it all went to Peggy instead. It's a, Yeah, I think it's a case of like for what the script is, for what the actors were given to work with. I think everyone's fine. I, I wouldn't call any of the performances bad in this. No. But yeah, that's how, that's how I feel about the acting overall. She also has uh, just a couple of my favorite episodes. The first one... <laughs> Where she was, like, investigating the place. So she shows up as, like, a tennis instructor, mm. a, a priest, a person who uh, does things for fires. A um, firefighter? No, I'm talking about, like, they hold the thing and let them know where the fire is. I don't think she was an actual firefighter. Oh. Um, and then she, the second to last episode is all enough focus on her. She gets the very last focus episode before they fight against the Black Cross Fury himself mm. with the guy who was her commander who she was like in love with or something. It was a very good episode. That second to last episode was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Oh, wow. I really, I really enjoyed that. She straight, she said machine guns. <laughs> she said guns. This woman did not care. You were getting in her way. You were getting either kicked in the face or gunned down. She had two options. Or blown up with her earrings. Or uh, the card thing was stupid. Momo card. And I'm just like, it's just paper. Well, we'll get more cards next season. That's their whole motif. But yeah, I in all honesty, I'm just like, watch this show for Peggy. You don't <laughs> need to watch it for anybody else. Especially because watch you, a bunch of Peggy compilation on YouTube somewhere. For a there good is one. Po- a good portion of the show, it was just her and Mito being out there doing a lot of the field work. Mm. At least initially. It's, yeah. They gave a lot to her, and I guess Mito as well, but almost every single time it's still ended up focusing on her. Mm. And even the other uh the other girl, 007, Yoko. Double O seven, yeah. Really. Hmm? Uh the only problem with her was her little brother. Mm. Yeah, that happens. Oh my god, that that got annoying. Every single episode I had to have. A Pretty problem. much every episode with a kid was just kind of like. Eesh. My favorite part with him, in all honesty, happened with uh, Daigoro mm. uh, when they were out there fishing, and he tried to get him to solve a riddle. He was like, "Maybe if you just uh, fish, don't don't talk." And I'll here like, yes, "Stop speaking, child." Best character. Tell him to shut up. <laughs> But yeah, on the whole, this show is eh. It's very episodic. An, an interesting yeah. historical piece. Yeah. Not very not engaging as a work of dramatic fiction. And it's weird because I actually really like the show at the or beginning. Or the Toku or anything. But, but then that second half comes in and I'm just like, nothing feels like a threat anymore. Mm. Which is weird because you still see people should have died. Mm. Get murked. <laughs> a good portion of this show is still people getting killed but then there's tonal whiplash with the way the monster acts mm. so it's just like I, I don't feel like you could kill anybody I don't feel like you could kill um, uh, this piece of chicken or whatever I don't know I don't think like they can kill anything but yeah go ranger mm-hmm. so that's that and what are we doing next you're gonna be mad at me oh no what is it 
Remember how we did a certain Indonesian toku a couple of months ago? Remember how that Indonesian toku has a sequel? <laughs> <laughs> We're doing Bima Satria Garuda X next. Uh, Marcus, you were right. <laughs> I am mad at you. <laughs> I'm glad we cleared out that misunderstanding. <laughs> but yeah, join us here episode 149. <sighs> We're going to do that. Take, but then, but then, but then, but then, we're done. <laughs> we're done with those two. Okay. <laughs> what, what, what is, uh, what's after that? Oh, um, whatever the next Metal Hero is. <laughs> I can't remember the name. Sharaban, Shida, Spielbon? I believe. Mm. Yep, we're doing Spielbon next after, uh, after Bima Satria Garuda X. Yep. Jiku Senshi Spielberg. Okay, this should be fun. But yeah, let us know what you think about Gurren in the comments below. Don't forget to join us on all the things, and we'll see you next time. And we will. Bye, Thank everybody. You. Thank you for watching.